Ohio State at Oregon goes poof. We got to talk about it after the bumper. Don't be cornering me. Hold up. Time. You got to help me with that, that corner sh**. <laughs> What's up, kinfolk? It's RJ Young. I am not on a step mill. Consider hitting the like and subscribe button because I upload a video every single day. It's always college football related. Sports related, we have a good time. Today, we need to talk about the Big Ten's decision to go with a conference-only football schedule in 2020. This news comes of Nicole Auerbach, who reports on the Big Ten in college football for The Athletic. Big scoop for her. Big bad news for us. All right, so many of you know that I was very excited to know that Oregon at Ohio State was, or oh, excuse me, Ohio State at Oregon was going to happen. And then in May... Governor of Oregon, Kate Brown, said, I don't see how we could actually have, you know, that game go on. And we all thought that was a little premature. And we thought, why make decisions in May? And now, feels like we're all going to feel this in a very real way because this is just the second domino following the Ivy League's decision to just move its football season in the spring to fall. Now, there's a number of big college football games that were non-conference games involving Big Ten schools. Michigan State had... BYU and Miami on the schedule. Minnesota had BYU on the schedule. Minnesota's got Florida Atlantic on the schedule. Penn State was going to go to Virginia Tech. Iowa, Iowa State is an in-state rivalry, so that one might be saved, but not if you want to keep everybody on the same number of games in the Big Ten. You also had some other bigger games that were just going to be nice money games that we are going to see, like Maryland, West Virginia. And on it goes, right? That's the news, and that's what sucks about it because nobody wants to see college football games go away. But it also really throws the season into flux because many of these games were supposed to take place on September 5th when Michigan was going to travel to Washington to play Jimmy Lake in his first year as the head coach at Washington after being an outstanding defensive coordinator there. And many of you also know that Jim Harbaugh really needed to get a great win against what we expected to be a good Washington team. And on the road, that would be a tremendous victory for them. But Washington is one of the most hardest hit states for COVID-19 across the country. I mean, it was Washington, it was New York, and then it was California, Florida for a little bit there. And we kind of sort of got it under control. Then we had protests break out, Black Lives Matter and the killing of George Floyd. And then we've had a rally here locally with the president of the United States in Tulsa. And we went back to work, right, in some capacity. 30 million of us do not have jobs, but we got out, we went to places, we did stuff, and we've seen spikes in the COVID-19 numbers, and we've had our public health officials go, yo, you got to put the brakes on this real quick, otherwise this gets out of control. And before I get into another conversation about COVID-19 and why we are doing what we are doing or why we're asking everybody to wear cloth masks and what the CDC has done, let's get back to football and say, if we see more conferences follow the suit of the Big Ten, for which I can't imagine that everybody is not going to fall in line with this, it really opens us up to who gets into the playoff and whether or not the playoff gets expanded. Because if you are playing just the teams that you play in your conference, right, and there are 14 teams in the conference and you are one of them, it means you got 13 games on the schedule, right, or 12 games on the schedule total. So 10 games on the schedule. Let's assume that you can have more than two teams in each conference go undefeated. Now, Big 12 will only end up with one unbeaten team if they end up with one unbeaten team because they play a round-robin schedule, in which case we've always decided that, you know, yeah, we want to make sure that we get one team in. The way that we get one team in is by making sure that they play everybody and you can't use this argument about they dodged anybody and we got the wins to show for it and it helps Oklahoma edge out in Ohio State in 2018 when they got run over by an actual train that is Purdue. Cool. But it also limits the number of teams that could be eligible to make the playoff. Like the SEC can actually have 14 teams in the league and still end up with two teams in the college football playoff. We've seen it before. Georgia and Alabama. As of now, Greg McGarity, who is the athletic director at Georgia, says he still plans on playing Virginia in the ACC at Atlanta in their non-conference matchup, but that remains to be seen. We'll see what the ACC decides to do because Clemson, has a very big game on the schedule, but Notre Dame is kind of sort of in it, and they'll, they'll be in there. 
You'll continue to look around at things like Auburn and North Carolina, who have a very big game on the schedule. And I know that both of those programs want to play each other, and they could really vault themselves into a conversation about making the college football playoff and having a bid to win the conference championship in doing so with a win against one of those two teams that we expect to be good. And that extends across the country. I mean, Minnesota really would have loved to be able to beat up on a BYU, which is a brand name program, and really would have loved to be able to hold that pelt up. Same thing with a Michigan State, who's in a rebuilding year, who's going to have a Miami, who's going to have a BYU on the schedule. And they were going to get an opportunity to show what they are able to do in Mel Tucker's first season as a head coach and Scotty Hazleton as a defensive coordinator. And they were going to try to build something worthwhile at the State University in Michigan. And then you look at teams like Purdue, which is trying to get its way back. Jeff Brom is one of the highest paid coaches in all the country. We're talking about a top seven salary here. And Rondell Moore might be the best all-purpose player in the entire country. And he's coming back from injury. So you know that they wanted to showcase Purdue. Then there's Cincinnati and Nebraska. So the American loses a marquee game with a huge fan base at Nebraska that craves football. And that was a Cincinnati team that played in a conference championship last year. And we were talking about them being a top 25 team for the entire year. Luke Fickle was going to be able to go beat up on a Big Ten team after getting skull dragged by Ohio State last year, which, you know, everybody does. I look at these things and I say, yeah, these are going to have far-reaching implications for our season. But if going to a conference-only schedule saves a college football season, I'm for it. And I'm going to be for it. It just means that we probably won't start the, the games until later on in the year. In which case, we have two things that we worry about. One, do the COVID-19 numbers get worse between now and then when we could have got games in and we didn't? Or second, do the COVID-19 numbers continue to go down and we know that we're going to be safer by the time we actually start a conference-only season in like the third or fourth week of September and try to run that all the way through and try to play whack-a-mole when it comes to the COVID-19 numbers and when it comes to what exactly a college football season might even look like in November when, again, the Masters is supposed to go on and professional golf is being played. But at that time, when we know that the flu itself is a big deal when it's cold and we're expecting to probably have another wave of COVID-19 positive tests break out, it's a really tricky, it's a really tricky needle that they're trying to thread, Right? That they're really trying to make this thing stick. And I get why the Big Ten is going to do that because they bring in $44 million per school and about a billion dollars annually from football. And they really need to have college football because Ohio State, Penn State might be two teams that have opportunities to play for national championships this year. That said, if this is what you have to do to protect your season, I totally understand that and I'll get with that. But that's big news. All right. That's it for me. Doses.